Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a, another mental health talk video part two. I am going to kind of go into more detail about one of the stories that I spoke about very briefly in my first video and I am also going to be adding a story that got sent to me by one of my very close friends who would like me to share her story with you as well. So before we get into the video, I just want to let everyone know if you have a story and you would like to get it out there, but you want it to be out there anonymously without your face connected to that video, email me your story and I will read directly exactly what you say in a video and I will not name any names. I will keep it completely 100% anonymous. I understand some people that go through their mental health issues don't want everyone to know that it's them. So I completely understand. This person is very close to me. Um, she is one of my very good friends and she does not want her name out in the world. So she asked me to share her story and also share our blog that we do together and the Facebook page which all of that stuff will be linked down below and I will also have the Facebook page name right here. Um, so let's just go ahead and get into it. Um, I am going to um, start by reading her story and then I will get into my story afterwards. And if I'm looking down a lot during this video, it's because I have it pulled up on my phone and I'm just going to read it directly from my phone. Okay, so here we go. Welcome to the life of the girl that is hard to handle. I am 22 years old and my name is not important. I'll explain why I have been diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety. When I started middle school, I was in with a group of so-called friends that treated me badly. They made me feel like a whore and a slut, all because of rumors that would randomly start. However, I was unaware of them doing it. Eventually, I learned that I could sext boys and that they found it hot, so I did it. But that led to pictures and those eventually made their way around. I had become the school slut at the age of 13. Awesome, right? Well, when I was 14, I was sexually assaulted by a guy I had a crush on in the high school classroom after school almost every Wednesday. I did nothing about it because I was embarrassed. The same age I got raped for the first time by another guy I thought I liked. These incidents made me feel worse and made me feel even more like a whore. Boys posted pictures on the internet, called me from blocked numbers, even had the balls to ask if I was good in bed as they had heard. I'd just go to my room and cry. There was only one thing that helped the hurt, and that was self-harm. I never told anyone, and then I told my guidance counselor that I had hurt myself, and I was looking for help. But that went too far, and the police got involved. So I said that I lied. The scars are still there. They still happen occasionally, in 2006, my cousin passed away. Then a few more family members died. I was losing people one by one. October 2nd, 2010. I thought I had met the love of my life. We did everything together. He made my heart feel whole again. Everyone in his family loved me. After about two years, things got bad. He would rape me almost every night, threatened to drive his car off of a cliff, called me names, never let me live down my past. It was bad. He was treating me badly, so I hurt him bad by cheating. 
Disclaimer, cheating is not okay and neither is self-harm. I had sent more pictures, made out with more guys than ever, all to get back at him. But after all of that, more rumors started. I was pregnant with someone else's kid. I had an orgy, threesomes, you name it, it was said. And he heard it all and believed most of it. 2012, I was pregnant with his child, but between the stress and smoking pot and drinking, I had a miscarriage. Probably for the best. I told him and he was mad. After three and a half years, I left him after he proposed at a parking lot. But then I met a new guy who is my whole world. And I met a few friends along the way. Everything was good, and then in due time, things went downhill. I lost my uncle's brother, my great aunt, friends from school again, one by one. I had my boyfriend, my family, my best friend, and my boyfriend's sister, and that was it. 2014, I was pregnant again with my boyfriend's child, but that miscarried as well. And now I have a handsome boy of my own, but now I currently deal with self-harm, low self-esteem, body image issues. I starve myself sometimes to lose the little belly fat I have. And the worst issue of all, losing the people I care about by getting replaced or finding someone better. I know my boyfriend could find someone less crazy. My best friend has a new life and my sister-in-law made new friends and has her own issues. I feel unloved, not wanted, replaced. This is my story and my journey and why I live with my mental illness. So, that is the end of my friend's story. If you guys want to hear more about her story, comment down below and I'm sure that she would love to share more information. Also, remember that I will have our blog that she posts on all the time and also the Facebook page that we manage together um, down below and also right here I will have it listed so that is the end of that story next I'm gonna go into more detail with a story that I started to kind of tell in my last video and yeah so here's this next segment okay so for my story portion of the video I want to kind of explain to you guys more in depth about how I found out that I was pregnant and the whole process of me miscarrying and up until now. So, um, I had previously, in the last video, I had filmed this portion, but when I was editing, it was way, way too long, so I had to cut this part, this part out. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like go back and really just tell the whole story. So in the last video, as I had said, Cody and I had met um, the end of October. October 25th is when we started dating and that is actually the day that I got pregnant. Um, yeah, so it was it came to it came as a surprise to me because first of all I was still on birth control I was taking my pills every single day religiously and I previously had been told that it would be very very hard for me to get pregnant and if I did get pregnant it would be hard for me to carry to term so I have been told this because I've been diagnosed with PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and also um, there is a possibility that I may have the starts of endometriosis. 
So, um, with all of that being said, October 25th is the date that I conceived, but I was technically two weeks pr further along than that because technically when a woman gets pregnant, they add two weeks on to the date of conception because of the cycles. So during the time that I was ovulating was October 25th and I didn't realize it um, because I didn't really keep up with my cycles very much and that's stupid. If you don't want to get pregnant, keep up with your cycles. <laughs> but, um, so, I was ovulating around the time of October 25th and th that's when I got pregnant. So, um, my due date with my son, um, was roughly, uh, was roughly July 19th. I calculated that up um, myself because, uh, with the help of my mom um, because I never actually got to go to the doctor um, because I just I didn't have insurance um, and when I found out I was doing a lot of traveling so um, my due date was roughly about July 19th um, so so October 25th is the date that my son was conceived and then about a week later which this is completely not normal so do not think that this is normal um, I've been told by multiple different people including my doctor that this is completely abnormal and they don't understand why um, this happened to me so a week after conception I started feeling horrible I woke up feeling sick I felt sick all day I was vomiting I could barely eat anything the only thing I wanted to eat was with tacos was tacos it was it was really bad um, and Cody had like made the comment maybe you're pregnant maybe you're pregnant just joking around at first but then as the days went by it was it had been about a week and I was still feeling sick and I'm like what is going on so my mom finally was like all right you just lost your insurance but I don't care because we need to get you to the doctor so I go to the clinic like the walk-in clinic and they do a urine sample pregnancy test and um, they like wanted to check all of like my urinal stuff so um, I have the urine sample done and they come back and they tell me they think that I just have food poisoning but I also have a mild UTI but that I am not pregnant so at this point I was only two weeks pregnant, technically four weeks pregnant, two weeks after conception because, um, so, I mean, not, tests normally don't show that quickly. So at this point, I'm just like, okay, I'm not pregnant. I told Cody, I was like, don't bring it up again. <laughs> I am not pregnant. The doctors told me I'm fine. I just have food poisoning. So this is now the end of the first week of November. Second week of November comes along and I'm still sick. Still sick. It's been another week and I am like what the hell is going on? Like at this point I was just over it. I was like why am I still sick? I have food poisoning. I have a UTI. I'm on antibiotics. I called um, my mom's friend who's in the medical field and she was like, yeah, you shouldn't be still feeling sick if you have food poisoning. It's been over 48 hours. You should be fine. And I'm like, well, what is going on then? Because I really don't know. And she was like, I don't know. Give it another week and see what happens. So, so I wait another week and then... 
I'm still feeling sick. Not as bad as before, but I'm still feeling pretty sick. Mostly just in the mornings and at night. Um, and I am vomiting at this point. So, Cody's like, babe, I really think that we need to go and buy a pregnancy test. You're going to Maine next week. You need to take a pregnancy test. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, we'll take one. It'll put my mind at ease. At this point, I would have been roughly five weeks. Yeah, about five weeks. Um, so we go and get the tests. We come back. It's night. I take the first test. I know they say to wait till morning, but I was too anxious. Um, I had to know right then. So I took a test and it was like four or five in the afternoon, I believe. And I took a test and I came back in here and I put the pregnancy test up on my dresser and I'm like all right we're gonna wait how I think it was like five minutes or ten minutes or however long it says to wait I can't it's been, it's been a while I've I've had a lot on my mind since then so we wait the however many minutes it tells you to wait on the test and I set the timer on the phone and then we sit around he's pacing back and forth as always because he always did that he was so annoying <laughs> um, and timer goes off and I'm like great I get up and I look at the test it's negative and I'm like alright whatever so we go about our business I leave it up there because I just was too lazy to throw it in the trash I leave it up there and he goes back up there a couple hours later and he's like babe do you see what I see and he hands me the test and a faint line a faint freaking line saying it was positive came up. Sorry if you hear anybody out there. My stepdad is currently putting my sisters to bed because it is bedtime. Um, but so it had turned positive and I at this point am freaking out and I'm like all right I can't hide it from my mom anymore. I'm going to talk to her about it. So I take a picture of the test even though she's downstairs but I didn't want to talk to her about it in front of my stepdad. Um, so I sent her a picture and I'm like, mom, we have a problem. And she's like, how long has it been since you took the test? And I said, about, about an hour. And she's like, okay, wait and take another one in the morning. And I was like, all right, that's fine. So we go to sleep that night. We wake up the next morning. And the first thing I do, as soon as I wake up, is I'm like, yes full bladder I need to go take this test so I get up and grab the test and I go to the bathroom and I take it I pee on the stick and I come back here and I put it back up on my or I put it on my bedside table this time and I get back in bed Cody rolls over and he like grabs me and he pulls me to him and I'm like babe I just took a pregnancy test and he was like what did it say and I'm like I don't know I'm waiting he's like okay so he sits straight up out of bed he's laying right here right here he sits straight up jumps over me sits on the floor and is holding the test in front of him like this <laughs> waiting for my timer to go off timer goes off and it's negative again and he's like what is going on maybe the first test was just faulty and i'm like probably so just put it down and get back in bed i'm going back to sleep so he gets back in bed we go back to sleep and i wake up an hour later to a phone call so i get off i take the call I get off the phone and I grab the pregnancy test because I get up out of bed and I'm about to clean our room and I tell him I said babe can you get up we're gonna clean because today's our cleaning day and he's like yeah sure so he gets out of after he fights me for about five minutes we get out of bed I grab the pregnancy test I'm about to throw it away and I look at it really quickly just to make sure you're never gonna believe it Faint line for the second time. Second freaking time after an hour. And I'm like, what the heck? So I, my stepdad's at work at this point. So I go downstairs and I show my mom both of these tests. And I'm like, mom, here's the one I took last night. Here's the one I took this morning. And she's like, well, this happens sometimes. 
but just to be sure wait a couple more weeks and then take another test we'll go to Maine and when you come back we'll take another test but for now just treat it like you're pregnant and I'm like okay that's fine so I stopped taking my birth control with my mom's permission stop taking my birth control I buy prenatal vitamins I start taking them so we go to Maine and we come back um, nine days later it had been nine days since I took the test the second the first and the second test it had been nine days so we come back and at this time he decided to buy the digital tests so I'm like okay whatever I'll take one and it'll, it, whatever so the third test that I take it was the day after Thanksgiving that I took that test I took the test and it was positive um, so I was five weeks at this point and I'm like, that's, my mom said that the reason she thinks that the first two said that they were negative was because I was too early for them to really tell immediately. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if that's the case, but I was only, I was only four, four weeks, I believe. No, I would have been six weeks when I took the third test. So I was about five weeks when I took the first ones. And I was about five, five and a half when I took the last one. So, um, I go, after Thanksgiving, I had a trip planned with my grandma to go to Florida. And while I was in Florida, like I said, Cody and I got into a really big argument. And four days later because of all of the stress that I was going through probably I miscarried I miscarried on December 3rd 2016 so um, I was seven and a half weeks and I know that that's not far enough along to tell the sex of the baby but I believe in my heart that it was a boy and I had the feeling the whole time that I was pregnant that it was a boy. Um, and I, that's just what I believe. And we named him Jameson Lee. And he is my angel baby. And he is in wherever he is at. I believe, I'm a Christian, so I believe that he is in heaven with my dad and with his father, Cody. And I cannot wait for the day that I finally get to see his beautiful face and I am finally with him for eternity. And that's just, that's what I have to believe. Whatever you believe, okay, but please do not post any negative comments on these videos. Any negative comments will be deleted and you will be blocked. I am, I have no time for bullies and negative comments are a form of bullying in my my in my mind so if you don't have anything nice to say don't say it at all period um so that is the end of this video and kind of both my stories and my friend's story and yeah, so like I said at the beginning of this video, if you have any stories that you would like to anonymously share, just email them to me and I will review them and possibly use them in a video. Um, if you would like to hear more of my friend's story, comment down below and let me know. Also, if you like this series, <laughs> give me a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot to know what you guys enjoy seeing. Um, so, yeah. Also, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for coming and joining me for this video and I would love if you would subscribe and officially join the family. My channel is all about positivity, body positivity, beauty positivity, mental positivity. That's what I want to make my channel all about. So if you'd like to join our little tiny right now family then go ahead and push that subscribe button. Also, make sure that everyone pushes the bell beside the subscribe button. It will notify you every single time that I upload a new video. And yeah, so that is it for this video. 
again thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next one bye